No, I'm not heading home early, Taylor. I wouldn't think of such a thing. Let us look at this line of zebras as we drive along this road. I too am hoping to find some lions that might hunt these zebras a bit later. There we have them. And they're all heading sort of in the same direction. And I suspect that they are going to cross over, not the Mara, but they're probably going to cross over towards those marshy areas south of where we live at Angama. And that's because it's very green over there. And I think that would be a good spot for them to be. They certainly seem to be moving as one, except for this one, who is facing us off. Go on. Yes. Don't you dare look at me in that tone of voice again. No, 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 no. Carry on, as you were. Go on. Yes. Don't make me speak again. Don't wag your tail at me like that either. Hmm? He's challenging us, Craig. You see that? No, he's not. He took one look at your beard and decided... Uh -uh. I have never seen so many zebra here, or anywhere. Rochelle, you want to know what environmental disasters normally occur in Africa? Uh, well, Rochelle, I think I know what you mean. Uh, the most, the greatest environmental disaster in Africa, of course, is the human being, but that's the same throughout the world. Uh, in fact, less so in Africa than it probably is in many other parts of the world. I guess natural phenomena that cause problems in Africa would include things like uh, cyclones on the eastern coast, around Mozambique, that area. Um, I suppose there might be... what else? You know, we not actually don't have huge natural disasters. No real earthquake problems. We don't have volcanoes that erupt on our heads from time to time. Very little in the way of coastal issues with things like tsunamis and that sort of thing. And although we do get cyclones on the eastern, south, southeastern coast, they really are not particularly severe. So the most dire natural uh, disaster we have in Africa is drought. And drought is uh, the limiting factor, I suppose. Many, many parts of Africa are water starved and so that of course creates a, a whole suite of problems, a whole, a whole lot of knock-on effects. But also because Africa's land mass is so ancient and by that I don't know it's obviously no older than the rest of the world but the land mass exposed to the soil is going to be quite interesting here. We we're just smelling some dung there and then got a bit of a fright from each other. Because the landmass is old, and that means that it has not had an, uh, a large amount of recent volcanic activity that, say, Southeast Asia has, it means that a lot of the soil is not particularly fertile. And so if you get a drought, then you immediately have a really catastrophic problem. So, I mean, grass will disappear. And because of the number of people and the cattle and goats and sheep and that sort of thing, a drought can really uh, savage a population of, of wildlife and therefore of people as well. Then I suppose the other natural disaster that occurs, possibly more so in Africa than anywhere else in the world, with the exception maybe of uh, the j deep jungles of South America and parts of Southeast Asia, is disease. We have some fairly major diseases on this continent that have yet to be dealt with, and malaria is the foremost amongst those. Yes, you get malaria in other parts of the world. Nowhere near does it, or nowhere else in the world does it affect people like it affects them here in Africa and there are still I think if I'm not mistaken the number of deaths owing or caused by malaria in in Africa still outnumber the number of deaths caused by HIV AIDS by tuberculosis and uh, by cancers so malaria is still a major major issue especially for little people now let's look at the zebra here He's got a very dark neck, but that's not what I wanted to show you. What I want to show you is the lack of a mane. And somebody asked about this a few days ago or a few weeks ago, and I've been noticing it more and more, but the zebras in the Mara, you do get the odd one with no mane at all. 
And they look like, um, you know, like when you first see a little schoolboy who's had his head shaved for the first time. Uh, not shaved completely, but I mean with the sort of haircut I've got these days. Well, they look like that. Rochelle, do you want to know if zebra, buffalo and wildebeest ever sleep? The answer is absolutely, they do. They have to. They must sleep. But they don't sleep like we do. They don't um, have a period of, you know, I don't know, anything between four and eight hours where they completely shut down. If they did that, they'd be eaten and killed very quickly. And so they sleep uh, sometimes, not while walking, but they'll sleep in the middle of the day quite often. They'll sleep while they are or doze while they're ruminating. And often in a herd like this, some will sleep and some will stay awake. So there's a kind of random distribution of sleep, if you like, where uh, some will be awake always and some will sleep. And that goes to, that's the same for wildebeest, zebra, uh, buffalo, uh, topi, all the 13 species of antelope that you get here. And uh, there's 10 species that you get at Juma. They have a very similar sort of sleeping pattern. It is only lions, really, that are able to sleep as soundly as they do. And, you know, we've followed lions for many nights now out here. And, yeah, some will sleep for four or five, sometimes six hours at a time. But, you know, they'll get up and they'll move for 15, 20 minutes, and they'll sleep again for another hour or two. But then they'll get up and move again. So I don't know how many other species there are in the world that sleep for a dedicated period like we do and I wonder if actually we're naturally supposed to do that or if uh, perhaps it's a um, sort of result of modern living if, if you like by modern I mean uh, dating back to the age or dawn of agriculture.